Now we come to forecasting with ETS models, which is usually the point of using an exponential smoothing model. So traditionally, point forecasts have been obtained by uh, iterating the equations of the, um, of the model for future time horizons, setting all of the future stochastic error terms to zero. And that works pretty well um, when seasonality is additive, uh, but it's not actually the same as the mean of the forecast distribution when seasonality is multiplicative. So instead, Fable does it differently and gives you the true mean of the forecast distribution. It's worth noting, and we've said this before, that point forecasts for ETS models uh, will be the same if you've got additive and multiplicative errors when everything other than the error is the same. So the same trend, the same seasonality, and the same parameters, alpha, beta, gamma, and L0, B0, and seasonal states, if all of those are the same and the only difference is whether the error is multiplicative or additive, then you'll end up with the same point forecasts. But otherwise, you'll have uh, different, different point forecasts. So let's do a simple example. This is using the model underpinning Holt's linear method when you have additive errors. So we take the forecast equation and for the first horizon after the end of the data set, which is time capital T plus one, the forecast will be the last observed level plus the last observed slope plus a new error term, which is, we don't know what that is. So the mean of that is simply L plus B because epsilon has mean zero and the variance of it is L plus B plus, so the variance of it is the variance of epsilon because L and B are unknown, we've seen them. Um, and so that's sigma squared. The next horizon time T plus two is uh, we write out the equation for uh, for the forecast, which is LT plus one plus BT plus one plus epsilon T plus two. And then we use the level equation um, and replace it with that. And we use the slope equation and replace it with that. And we now have an expression for time two steps ahead using the last observed level and the last observed sl um, slope plus some errors. Uh, and the mean of that uh, is simply L plus 2B, because I've got a B here and a B here. So we end up with two Bs here. And the uh, so that's the mean. The variance is going to come from, from each of these terms. So we can write out what the variance is going to look like. So that's with uh, Holtz additive trend and additive error. If we had multiplicative error and additive trend, you do the same sort of calculation and we end up with an expression for one step ahead and for two steps ahead and so on, and you can iterate. Now, obviously this is a little bit tedious and you don't want to be doing this very often. Um, and so we can derive expressions for the means and variances for all of these types of models. Um, the prediction intervals uh, come from being able to estimate the variances of these models, um, which can't come from the methods that we introduced in sections one, two, and three of this chapter. They only come once we got to the models. The prediction intervals will, will differ between models with additive and multiplicative errors. And we, for some of the models, we have exact formula for the variances and therefore exact formula for the prediction intervals. For some of the models though, we have not been able to derive exact formula. And for those models, we actually simulate future sample paths. So you, you use the fitted model and you condition on the last estimate of the states and you run it forward thousands of times and you can estimate the prediction intervals from the percentiles. So when Fable needs to do that, it will do it. When it knows the exact formula for the variance, it will use it to make it faster. So here are some of those exact formulas. This is when we've got... Um, simple additive models. So the first one is for no trend, no seasonality, but additive error. So this is simple exponential smoothing and uh, it's given by this relatively simple expression. So when H equals one, that term disappears and you've got sigma squared. Otherwise you add in um, a multiple of alpha squared 
for each of the future horizons. When uh, you've got some trend and additive error, um, then you can uh, derive with a bit of effort the expression for the variance. And again, notice that if, our, if h equals one, one step ahead, that whole thing disappears and you've got sigma squared again. In fact, that's true for all of the equations on this slide and, and so on. So as the model gets a little more complicated, the derivation gets more difficult and the expression gets more complicated. Um, the most difficult one here is additive errors, damped additive trend and additive seasonality, the one on the bottom. And you can see it's, you know, it's a little bit painful to actually try to compute that. I can assure you it was very painful to derive it as well. Um, but uh, this is why Fable can do the distributions quite quickly, because we have expressions like this for most of the models. And once we have the variance, then we can plug it into, um, you know, we can use the normal distribution and plug it into a formula like this, where C simply depends on what coverage we want. So let's do an example. So this is corticosteroid drug sales in Australia from the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme, the PBS data set. Corticosteroid drugs are the HO2 category. So we set, we filter ATC2 as equal to HO2, and we sum over the other keys to get a single time series that looks like this. And we, what we want to do is to fit a ETS model to this data set. So if we just ask Fable to give us an ETS model, it comes back saying, here's a multiplicative error, additive damped trend and multiplicative seasonal, seasonality model. Um, here are the smoothing parameters and here are the states. Just notice in passing that the two of the smoothing parameters are very, very small. Um, beta and gamma are almost equal to zero. And that tells us something about the model. It's saying that the slope is not changing much over time. It's hardly changing at all. So essentially, you've got a linear trend going through the, the model. And the seasonality is also not changing much over time. So your seasonality is roughly periodic for this model. Um, the initial states and the seasonal states are all there. So that's what gets it going when it does the forecast. And then at the bottom of the screen, you've got Akaiki's information criterion, the, the corrected version of it for small samples, which is the one we tend to use, and the uh, alternative information criterion, the Bayesian information criterion, which we're not going to be using. And uh, this one here, this is the variance of um, epsilon. The variance, in this case, it's multiplicative error, so the variance of the relative errors. Okay, what if we had chosen a model? Like, what if we'd said, well, we really want an AIA model, a uh, additive error and additive seasonality, um, an additive trend. Then it comes back with uh, this set of uh, parameters, a little bit different, still a small beta because the trend is going to be still close to linear, but other things are different. And if you look at the AICC value, it's quite a bit bigger than the one we had on the previous slide. So Fable is choosing the model with the smallest AICC value. It's giving us the best model um, because that's the model that generally gives the best forecast. And the one that we might have chosen manually like that is giving us is going to give us worse forecast you would expect given the size of the AICC value. Um, let's have a look at the forecast from the automatically chosen model. Uh, and you can see that it's actually picked up the trend and the seasonality nicely, or well, very little trend, but quite strong seasonality. And it's, you know, that looks believable. Prediction intervals may be a touch wide than wider than you might think, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Um, if I take the two models, the automatically chosen model and the AIA model that we guessed from the data, um, we can compare the results. Uh, I'm only comparing these results on the training set uh, because I haven't held out any data to look at in a test set. Um, but it's showing us that, you know, on the training set, the automatically chosen model is substantially better fit than the um, than the model, the guest model, the AIA model, um, both in terms of root mean squared error and any other measure. And these are relatively comparable 
You can compare them on the training set if you've got the same number of parameters. Uh, actually, the AIA model has one fewer parameters than the auto model, but the difference is quite that the difference is the damping parameter. But the difference between them is is you know, huge. So that suggests that um, you know, the automatically chosen model is much better fit to the data and is probably going to be a much better um, forecast as well. Okay, so that's uh, forecasting with ETS models. In general, you're just letting Fable do all the work, um, both in terms of choosing the model and in terms of producing forecasts. But if you want to do any analysis of what's going on, um, you can do use some of the techniques that we use to derive forecasts and and or some of the equations we showed to uh, to show what's going on under the hood.